Hi, this is Dave the RPA Guy, and in this Blue Prism tutorial, which is part 5 of our functions series, we are going to be going over the exceptions functions in Blue Prism. Now this is not an exception handling guide, even though, as you can see up there next to me, we'll go through a number of scenarios that will appear to be somewhat of an exception handling guide. So if you glean something from it, great, but our focus is going to be understanding the exceptions functions themselves and what kind of data comes out of them. I like to think that in addition to automation specialists, we are process improvement experts, right? In this video, I'm improving the process. In the previous few videos, I have used the process studio to run these functions in, and that works fine, but it, it is adding a little bit of time to the video and a little bit more effort on my part, because what I'm doing is if I wanna run these functions in this page, I have to click play, and it's gonna start the process flow on the main page, because that's what processes do. So instead, we're gonna move all of this logic over to an object so that we can run it from object studio and we won't have that problem. Off screen I have moved all of the logic from the functions process to our functions object and since we no longer need the process anymore I'm going to go over to the management tab for processes find that functions process and move it over into retire processes go back over to the studio tab and you'll notice it's no longer listed here. Let's open up our functions object now. First thing you'll notice is that we have all the same logic and the difference here though is that when I run it. Look at that. It did not jump to a main page. It didn't jump to the main page when we got to the end either. Uh, so we don't have to put our breakpoints here and stuff like that. Uh, and since we are working with a single window, what I like to do is zoom in. So I'm going to do that and then we'll get started. In order to take a look at these exceptions functions, what we're going to do is use four scenarios. Let me orient you what you're looking at when you see this. This is an example of our entire first scenario. It's made up of a data item that tells us whether or not we're going to run the scenario using this decision stage, and then some note stages that show the scope of our scenario, some data items that we're using for it, some business data here, as well as the exception data or where we're going to cap be capturing that data, our decision point to determine whether we've broken a business rule, and then the exception stage we'll use to throw an exception in the case that we did break that business rule, and then we have the recover and resume stages with stages in between them to mark the scope of the recovery mode. Inside of those, we have the three functions that we can use for exceptions. And we'll get to that in just a minute here. For each of these scenarios, I will be stepping through rather than pressing go so that we can talk about each of the points along the way. Let me click step in. Yes, we're going to run scenario one because this is true. We're starting scenario one. Is the scenario one maximum exceeded? So our business rule here is that we have a maximum number. Does our data exceed this number? And here's our data, scenario one data. You can see that 15 is in fact more than 10. And so this expression right here, S1 data greater than S1 maximum will come out to true. And so we'll proceed along the yes path where we will meet this exception stage. Now let's take a look at this. This will help us to understand our exceptions functions. The point of this stage is to give Blue Prism some information it can use to sort of generate a user-defined exception. And I say user-defined because Blue Prism has its own exceptions that can happen at different times if certain rules are broken inside of the system. For example, dividing by zero is breaking a rule that would throw an exception. We have a name of a stage, which if whenever this throws the exception, this will come out of the function we have down here, get exception stage, that's the name of it, and then exception type, this is business exception in this case, we have a drop down list, we can choose other ones. This data will come out of our function get exception type down here, and then exception detail, which is just gonna be a sentence or a paragraph with calculations in it and references to data items, which is what we will get whenever we call this calculation stage down here with the function for get exception detail. All right, let's go ahead and step. Here we're generating our exception and we will recover it right here. If you'll notice what I have here is I have this catch block, which means that if anything gets generated as an exception inside of this block, it will look for a recovery stage that is inside of the block. If there's nothing inside the block, it will look for the next recovery stage outside the block. And we're gonna proceed along this guy's path here. Now, let me go and show you, if I click on this, our function is exception type, open close parenthesis. I'll hit step and it gets our exception type of business exception that we got from this stage. The next thing I will do is click step and we'll look the exception detail. Here's the function exception detail, open close parenthesis. And looks like we got our exception detail over here. Scenario one data of $15 exceeds the maximum allowed amount of $10 by $5. 
We'll click step one more time and what this last one does is a little bit different than the other two. In this case, it looks similar is that it is getting data from inside this stage. What it got was maximum amount exceeded, which is the title or name of this stage. You'll see a little bit lower that it won't necessarily pull the data from this stage specifically. It takes the name of whatever stage on the entire page caused the exception. Let's hit step. And now what we have done is we have gone out of recovery mode. Once you start recovery mode, you can get exception type, exception detail, and exception stage. Once you leave recovery mode, you can no longer retrieve it. Scenario two looks very similar to scenario one, except in this case, what we are trying to point out is actually what I just mentioned is that you can only use exception functions inside of recovery mode. So let's go ahead and keep stepping. In this case, it's a Another business rule we are checking for, that's not the focus of the scenario, but I'll go ahead and point out, here's our account number. And our business rule is that account numbers can only have numbers in them. Is number, and then I have the data item over here. So it just checks, can this turn into a number? Oh, uh, if it's got letters in it, so it should turn out to be false. It is not a valid account number. Let's hit next. Looks like it checked our business rule correctly. It should generate a business exception here. We'll look inside this stage really quick. Business exception, the name of the stage is account number invalid and we have an exception detail here. We'll step again. Recovery mode has started and so now we can get the exception details. I'll open this up just so you see what's inside. It's the same thing as we saw above. Instead of having three different calculation stages, we have a multi-calculation stage and does the exact same thing as those did above. I'm going to step and we'll see that all three pieces of data were thrown in here at once. And if you look at it here, pause the video, you'll see that it does match the information we saw before here. Now what we've done is we have resumed. We have cleared the exception. We no longer have one in Blue Prism. Blue Prism says everything is good to go. So if we ask it, hey, Blue Prism, what are the, what's the exception stage type and detail? Blue Prism is going to say, what? That's not a thing. So you can see down the error we have here is an internal error. Failed to evaluate expression, exception stage, exception stage function can only be used when in recovery mode. Now we know you have to call the exception type, exception detail, and exception stage only within recovery mode. So that is between a recover and a resume. Step and resume. So now we have exited recovery mode. We're going to start into scenario three, but what we've got to do a little bit different for this scenario is for this to work, I need to call this from another page. And I'll show you why that is because it is involving preserve the exception. So I'm going to click reset. We're going to move over to our exception helper page. And all this is doing is simply calling the page we were just on. And specifically what it's doing is passing in false for every scenario except for scenario number three so that we can jump straight to scenario three and not deal with the others. What eventually will happen is you'll see that an exception will be thrown and the process flow will be passed up to be caught right here because if an exception happens inside of this page and it's not dealt with inside of there, it will bubble up to this recover stage because it's in this block. I'm going to reset, step in. We are going into the page. We're going to step down. We can see that the scenario one is enabled got turned to false because that's the inputs we gave it. We're going to click step. It's going to skip scenario one and two. And now we're at scenario three. What I'll point out is that our goal here is to look at what preserve the exception is. So the detail details of the exception itself are not important in this case. So I'm going to step down here and this decision is going to go to the right because it's hard coded to true. And then I'm going to click next here. And what we got was these details. Example exception, configuration exception is the name of the exception type. And then exception detail is random config exception because it doesn't really matter what's here. The point is, for whatever reason, we need to pass these details up to the next page. Okay, so let's say an exception happens right here and we don't have much control over this that much. Then we can recover that, but then what we need to do is while we are still in recovery mode, throw those details up to the next page. So that's what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna step again inside of this. Let's remind you here, so we do have some details in here. Inside of this stage, however, we have no details beyond the name of it and we have preserved the type and detail of the current exception. Let's click OK. Step. Notice what it did was it jumped up to the page that we called from and it got caught by this recovery stage. Step once, twice. And you'll see that what we have here is the same details that we had on the page below. And that's because we preserved the exception. And that is useful because you can pass an exception through an exception stage, which normally will overwrite the details of the exception that has already been generated. But instead here, it throws it without changing those details. 
Something else I want to point out, notice that it says exception stage, preserve exception to next page up. That means this exception stage is not exactly like the other two, like type in detail. These still refer to the original exception stage we had, but you notice here that exception stage name is not example exception, it's this one. So that's something to understand that is slightly different about the two. This exception stage data item is going to be whatever most recent stage generated the exception. Let's move on to our next scenario. I'm actually just going to right click onto run scenario four, set next stage, and we will step in. We're at the start of scenario four. You see here it says save screen capture. I felt like it would just be an injustice not to talk about save screen capture. In order to run scenario four here properly, what we're going to have to do is run this from control room. Why? Well, because saving screen capture, as it says in the Blue Prism documentation for the screen capture, is that this will only work if you are running from control room. So first thing though, before we do that, make sure you go over to your settings, go to the system tab and go to settings. And there is a check mark here. You need to, you need to make sure that allow latest runtime resource screen capture, click that checkbox and then apply that and make sure that you have that on. And then what we can do is is we can run from control room. So I'm actually going to create a process for this. I apologize if you are new to Blue Prism and you haven't dealt with this stuff before, but maybe this is exciting to see how you can use an object because the problem here is that we can't run an object from control room directly. We have to run a process script from control room, which means that how we originally were doing this, where we were running in a process studio, meant that it was a little easier to get this done, but that's okay, we can still accomplish it. I'm gonna right click on exceptions functions and click publish. And then I'm going to save this object published for scenario four. The next thing I'm going to do is go create a process. So let's go over here and we will create test process for scenario four. Since I have published that action, what I can do is drag an action on here and it's only going to do a single thing. We are going to select our object, which was named functions, exceptions functions, you can see here pops up. It's the only action available. And I have put in some required inputs. So I'm going to type false for scenario one, false for scenario two, false for scenario three, and true for scenario four. We don't get any outputs. We're going to be doing this for the screen capture purposes only. Let's link in this stage, save this. Um, before we do that, we need to actually publish. Okay, published process. Now what we can do is go to control room and we can see I have a number of resources. This is actually the computer I'm on. Let me just use one of my other computers that's connected in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this test process onto this resource right here. Click start selection. And once it runs through this, it should save the screen capture and we're going to go over and right click on the resource that we want show latest screen capture, it'll load here. This is actually a perfect example. So say you had some kind of error happen and you weren't sure what caused it. Turns out it couldn't download some updates and maybe that's what prevented your process from working. Our process didn't require any interaction really with the desktop at all. It all could run in the background. So we didn't have a problem with that, but this just shows the uh, real benefit that you can have to using the screen capture functionality. We are back and now that we've run that, I just wanna point out that what we did here was running in control room, of course, is that we stepped right here and then the process got to the point and said, is home page loaded? And I have it set to false. Okay, so it's hard coded there, but our, our assumption here is that during the running of our process, the output we got from something or somehow we determined that the home page of some application we were working with didn't load. And so we went on this this recovery path here. We got an exception saying account balance home page did not load. It's a system exception and here's a detail for it. And on this stage, we have save screen capture checked. And as long as you have the setting checked also in Blue Prism and then you are running in control room, you should be able to get the screen capture, but only the last one. So whatever the most recent time was that an exception stage ran with this checked on that resource is the one you will get. So I'll go ahead and step through just so we can see. We can get the exception detail here like we've already done and we'll step through to the end. Here in part five of our function series, we looked at the exceptions functions. Understanding the exceptions functions is essential to being successful in Blue Prism. And I'm just hoping that if you're new to Blue Prism, that this helped to get you a jumpstart into working with those exceptions and knowing what to do with them.
And in the next video, we'll be looking at the data and file functions and might be able to look at the logic functions as well with that. But I'll see you next time.